What's going on guys and welcome to another crack a pack episode today We are opening up a pack of scars of Mirrodin. This is a really really cool set uh, I think we've opened it a couple times maybe on this channel uh, It's really really fun to open because there's a lot of just fun good value cards in this set So I'm really excited to see what we get Of course, we're gonna go through every card and figure out what our pack one pick one pick would be uh, If we were drafting this set, I did not actually draft during this time uh, I did collect during this time, but I didn't draft during it So I'm familiar with some of the cards, but I don't necessarily know what the best strategies are So we'll hopefully learn a little bit together, but our first card here is Moriarch Reaver. It is a 3-2 for two and a black vanilla creature. Uh, not super excited about this. It's just a 3-2 for three. It seems just filler in my opinion. Uh, if you do need a playable, I feel like this is kind of on curve, it's fine, uh, but it's really not very exciting. I'd much rather have something that has some kind of uh, enter the battlefield ability, something like that, uh, so not super exciting there. Uh, Sky Eel School is a 3-3 for 3 and 2 blue. It does have flying and when it enters the battlefield, draw a card and then discard a card. So this is actually very much up my alley. This is a 3-3 flyer for 5. When it comes into play, you loot, which I love. Uh, it digs you a little bit deeper into your deck. It gives you an evasive threat. Uh, a 3-3 three, three flyer is actually pretty threatening, I think, in limited. Uh, and so I really, really like this card. Uh, it's not obviously the most incredible card in the world, but it is actually pretty good, so I'm fine with that. Uh, Saberclaw Golem is a 4-2 for 5 of any color. Uh, it's uh, You can pay red and it gains first strike until the end of the turn. I don't super like this. Uh, it gives you a little bit of like a mana sink. It's not the best mana sink in the world, uh, but it does give you a little bit of like tech against certain uh, board stall positions, things like that. And so I like it in that instance, but it is a 4-2 for 5. It's going to be really easy to either burn this out or just block it with something. Uh, obviously, you do have the ability to throw first strike into it, so that can obviously favor you pretty heavily, which is why the toughness on this creature is so low. Uh, but I'm still not a huge fan of it. Uh, you really have to start leaving up that red mana every turn, and sometimes you want to just keep moving forward with your curve. Obviously, at five, you're kind of later in the game, uh, so it may be that you can't really curve out as well at that point anyway, but uh, I just, I'm not the biggest fan of this. Uh, it, it doesn't seem to be the best threat, in my opinion. I will say it is nice because theoretically you can throw it into every deck, but you do kind of need that red uh, to make this good. Otherwise, I think it's absolutely just useless. So, not a super huge fan of that card. Uh, Nierok uh, Invisimancer. <laughs> Uh, it's a 2-1 for 1 and 2 blue. It is unblockable, and when it enters the battlefield, target creature is also unblockable until the end of the turn. I actually kind of like this card. Uh, I don't really like that it doesn't have an ability that happens when uh, you deal damage to the opponent. I feel like that would be much more worth it, but obviously a little too good. I like that it gives another creature unblockable when it comes into play. That makes the 3 mana a little more worth it, because it is just a 2-1. Uh, but it is also unblockable, so you can kind of get this, throw enchantments on it, do something like that and really deal some heavy damage if you need to. Uh, and so I do like this. I think the Sky Eel School is a little bit just all around better, uh, but the uh, Invisimancer is definitely a strong pick. I kind of like it, not as much though. Uh, Melt Terrain is a sorcery for two and two red. Destroy target land and it deals two damage to that land's controller. Not the most exciting card in my opinion. Land Destruction, I believe we even talked about in the last episode, uh, while very, very good and constructed and definitely has its uses there, uh, unfortunately in Limited, you're mostly just going to be up against basic lands, so that really doesn't help you that much. Yes, you do set your opponent a turn back, which is useful, uh, but generally speaking, they're going to have enough lands and at least be able to get to their lands that it's not going to matter quite as much. Uh, that two damage is also a nice little bonus, but I don't think it's worth it necessarily. It doesn't make the card worth it uh, for a limited environment, so I'm really not the biggest fan of this at all. Uh, Echo Circlet is an artifact equipment for two mana. Uh, the equipped creature can block an additional creature, and the equip cost is only one. I don't really like this. Uh, I prefer my equipped creatures to give a little bit of a, uh, a bigger buff. Being able to block m multiple creatures while can definitely be useful if you have the, the right creature for it. Uh, it just doesn't seem all that exciting. Uh, I'd much rather give you a little bit of a power bonus or something like that uh, to make it a little more worth it. This just doesn't seem all that good. It's a very defensive card anyway, and I'd like to be a little more proactive and limited if I can. So not super exciting there. 
Uh, Stoic Rebuttal is an instant for one and two blue. Uh, this does feature Metalcraft, which was a really cool mechanic in this set. So uh, it costs one less to cast if you control three or more artifacts. As you can already tell, we've already run into a couple, but artifacts are very, very heavy in this set. It is a Mirrodin set after all. Uh, and so if you control three or more Metalcraft triggers, there's a lot of stuff with Metalcraft in this set and it does make it really, really good. Uh, in that instance though, you do just counter target spell. So uh, this is basically cancel with the ability to become an actual counter spell. So uh, if, you do con if you do have three or more artifacts, this literally just costs two blue, which of course is the exact cost of counter spell. Uh, and so it is actually pretty good in that instance. Uh, if you're in uh, an artifact heavy but like kind of blue stolly deck or something like that a card like this is pretty good uh, I don't like taking it early I'd rather have some high artifact count or something like that to kind of be the backbone and then pick up a card like this maybe later in the draft uh, I don't think it would go super quickly so I would be pretty comfortable being able to wheel this if need be so not super stoked on that uh, Loxodon Wayfarer is a 1-5 for 2 and a white. It is a vanilla creature. I hate this card uh, very, very much. There are instances where these things are good. These are stall cards, just to keep that in mind. It's a 1-5, so it is going to block 4 days, which is great uh, in certain instances, but I'm not a huge fan of it. I would much rather have something that's going to deal enough damage to, to actually destroy a creature or uh, at least get in a little bit of damage to the opponent uh, over time. This just doesn't seem to do the best job with either of those things. So not super excited by this card. Uh, Wing Puncture is an instant for one green. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature with flying. Uh, this is a very situational card I just want to point out. So you do have to have a creature on your field whose power is greater than the opposing creature uh, in terms of toughness, but it also the opposing creature also has to have flying. That's very specific. Uh, I don't know how often that's going to be super relevant. Uh, I do think you could probably get away with one of these in your deck, but generally speaking, you have no idea how many flyers the opponent has, and if they just don't have any, a card like this is absolutely useless. So you kind of have to be careful with stuff like that. I'm not a huge fan of this card. I definitely wouldn't take it early. But uh, maybe later in the draft, if I was in green, I would consider it kind of a removal spell light. Like, not the best, most reliable piece of removal ever, but it is there. It's useful. Maybe I would play it. So, uh, Steady Progress is an instant for two and a blue. This features proliferate. So you choose any number of permanents and or players with counters on them, then give each another counter of the kind they already had there. So this works for planeswalkers, this works for opponents, uh, poison counters are a thing. Um, the uh, planeswalker loyalty counters obviously, but then uh, any like counters that we see on creatures, anything like that, you can decide which ones you want to add one to. Uh, and it's actually a really, really powerful mechanic. I love this mechanic. We're seeing it actually come back uh, in War of the Spark, which is pretty exciting. So this does just also say draw a card. Uh, this is a good card if you're relying on proliferate. So if you're in that deck, it's very good. Uh, it does draw you a card for three mana. That's not super exciting, but being able to put counters on things is pretty awesome. So. In that instance, it's good. Otherwise, it's really bad. Uh, not super excited by this card. Three mana to draw a card is pretty terrible no matter what. So not super excited by this one. Uh, first uncommon is Slice in Twain. So it's an instant for two and two green. Destroy target artifact or enchantment and then draw a card. So this is very classic sideboard tech. Uh, you will definitely want this uh, in a green deck if you can get it. I will say because this is so artifact heavy, this set, uh, you could theoretically just throw this in your main board, at least one of them, and probably be okay. Uh, there are enough artifacts that most of the time players are going to have at least a couple, so you will find a target for it, uh, and just straight up artifact destruction can be hugely powerful in this one. So uh, I do think that this is a good card. I don't know if I would take it uh, above the, the eel school here. Uh, just because the eel school is much more of a like it's a threat it does a little bit more uh, This does draw you a card, which is nice, but if you don't have a target for it, it's just bad uh, And so for that reason, I don't think I take it over that 
Uh, Volition Reigns. So it's an enchantment for three and three blue. Enchant permanent. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if the enchanted permanent is tapped, you untap it, and then you control the enchanted permanent. So this is a really powerful card. Uh, this is straight up just steal a thing, uh, which is great. It is six mana. It costs a lot. Three of that mana does have to be blue, which is also a lot. But it is really, really powerful. I do think that this definitely beats out the Sky Eel School, uh, just because you can straight up steal your opponent's biggest threat. And then all of a sudden, you're in a very commanding position. So I like this card a lot. Uh, any kind of control magic stuff, generally speaking, is going to be pretty good. So definitely like that. Uh, Riddle Smith is a 2-1 for 1 and a blue. Whenever you cast an artifact spell, you may draw a card, and then if you do, discard a card. So this is a effectively a looter that repeats any time you play an artifact. Uh, pretty good. For 2 mana, it's also a 2-1, which is fine. Uh, I like this card a lot if you're going to be in an artifact-heavy deck. This is very much an engine card for that deck, so you would definitely, definitely want this. I like the uh, Volition Reigns card a little more, uh, for sure, so I'm going to go with that over this, but still a powerful card. And then our rare Ratchet Bomb. So uh, it's an artifact for two mana. Put a charge counter on Ratchet Bomb if you tap it, and then you can tap it and sacrifice it. Destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on Ratchet Bomb. I don't like this card, uh, at least not in limited. I don't think it's that good. There are instances where it's good and maybe constructed, uh, but generally speaking, not a huge fan of it. This does very uh, very well synergize with Proliferate, though, uh, so you can definitely boost the counters on it that way to get it to a point where you need to. But I think a lot of times this is going to end up being, like at best, a two-for-one, which is good, but nine times out of ten i think it'll probably just be a one for one on whatever the opponent's biggest threat is and you run the risk of destroying your own threat i'd rather just straight up steal their threat so i think that's what i'm going to go with uh definitely volition reigns in my opinion i do think we had some very good options though uh, so feel free in the comment section below if you disagree let me know but if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.